أتذكر يوما كنت تعانق دمعة الفكر تنادي الله في صبر وترجو رحمة from shaitan let's listen to these last two surahs of the quran a lot of us would know them off by heart they are called al muawwidatan the two surahs of protection why are they called that of protection let's listen to the hadith there are so many narrations explaining this some of them are muttafaqun alayh and some of them narrated only by imam bukhari like the narration of aisha radiyallahu anha the others a narration of anas ibn malik radiyallahu anhu what i've done is taken all these narrations and i will give you the story at the time of Rasulullah sallallahu there was a Jewish servant of his who had taken some of his hair and taken some of the teeth of the comb that he was using in, by the instruction of some of the other people from amongst the Jewish people who had intended to cast a spell on Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So they took it, they took 11 of these uh, teeth of the comb and they tied his hair and they blew in it and did whatever they wanted to and they, they, they put it in a certain well under a certain rock and it resulted in Rasulullah struggling as a result. Obviously, he was a Nabi of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It did not affect revelation in the sense that nothing wrong happened but this only occurred in order for us as an ummah to learn a lesson how to protect yourself from the devil. So people ask sometimes, why did this happen to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa he was perfect, but Allah says he was an example for you to follow. In order to be an example for you and I to follow, Allah made him go through certain things that he did not deserve to go through. But in order for that to be a lesson for us to say that you as an ummah, if you follow him to the T, you will be able to achieve the protection from the same devils who tried to harm him. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So that was the beauty of it. It's not that there was anything wrong. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all a deeper understanding. The status of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is too high for us to utter words of disrespect. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. So he could see certain things and it affected him in a certain way. And this lasted a whole month. And in some, according to some narrations, a few more months. Some take it as far as six months. And in the interim, he was quite ill and sick. And Aisha radiallahu anha says, one day Allah sent to him two angels, one at his feet and one at his blessed head. Sallallahu alayhi wasallam. The one asks the other, what is wrong with him? So the other says, there is a spell that has been cast on him, which means magic. Matbubun, that's the word used. Magic. So the first one says, who did it? So the name comes about, and this is obviously by revelation. The name of the person was Labid ibn al-A'sam al-Yahudi. And so he says, what did he do? So the other angel answers and he says, he took 11 strands of hair or the hair of Muhammad sallallahu and tied them on 11 of the teeth of the comb and placed them under the rock in, a, in the pit of a well known as Darwan, Bi'ri Darwan. So, what is the solution? In the meantime, verses of the Quran were revealed. Rasulullah sallallahu sent some of his companions to that well. At the pit of the well, he told them, you will find this, this, this. They found it. They brought it back to him exactly as was described. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed 11 verses. The first were the verses of surat, uh, the first surah and then the next surah. Qul a'udhu bi rabbil falaq, that is suratul falaq. And then Qul A'udhu Bi Rabbin Nas, that is Surah Al-Nas. The total of 11 verses between the two surahs. As he read one verse, he released one knot. He read another verse, he released another knot. By the time he completed all 11 verses, he had released all the knots and he was completely and totally cured. And this was taught to us from that day that if you would like protection from anything superstitious, the devils, the evil eye, no matter what it is, you need to read in advance. Don't wait for something to happen. Read in advance every morning and evening. These two surahs, Falak and Nas, thrice each, morning and evening, no matter what, every single day of your life. And it will result in a metal armor around you. You add to that what is known as Ayatul Kursi. I'm sure you would know what I'm speaking about. Certain verses of uh, Surah Al-Baqarah, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us all. Remember, prevention is better than cure. 
You need to be a pure person. You need to be reading early morning and every evening without being lazy and you will be protected. Then if something happens to you, go and seek medical attention, inshallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open your doors and mine. May Allah protect us all. Let me go through the meaning of these beautiful verses because we know the Arabic. Let me go through the English in order for us to appreciate what is being said. Say, I seek refuge in the Lord of daybreak from the evil of that which he created and from the evil of darkness when it settles and from the evil of the blowers in knots and from the evil of an envier when he envies. Subhanallah, that's one surah, Surah Al-Falaq. Then we have Surah Al-Nas. Say, I seek refuge in the Lord of mankind, the sovereign of mankind, the God of mankind, from the evil of the retreating whisperer who whispers evil into the breasts of man from amongst jinn kind as well as mankind. Subhanallah. So we are asking Allah's protection and we repeating these statements thrice, morning and evening. And that is how, inshallah, we will achieve protection. Remember, these are simple, beautiful, melodious verses of the Quran that are revealed right at the end of the Quran. It's important for us to memorize them and inshallah to repeat them on a daily basis with conviction. Go through the meanings and inshallah, don't forget, like I said, the two surahs, Al-Duha and Al-Sharh. Remember to go through the meanings. Inshallah, it will bring about a lot of comfort just by knowing what Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa went through and the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for him as well as for every single one of us. May Allah accept this entire month of Ramadan from us and whatever we have forwarded for his sake. And may Allah forgive our shortcomings and errors and mistakes for indeed we are human. Any error we've made is from us and shaitan and anything we've uttered upright is solely and only from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad. Subhanallah bihamdihi subhanakallahumma bihamdik. Nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu. We like.